Hi, my name is Lizette, and I live in North Vancouver with my family. I'm Claire Parker. I'm 13 years old, and I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder when I was 10. I was 11 years old when I moved from India, and um, it was very new to me. I barely knew English, and I started going to school. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have that many friends. Um, I, I was basically alone. At a very early age, she showed signs of anxiety, that something wasn't right. She, she was always anxious. Sandeep, our youngest daughter, is a real smart and a beautiful girl. Moving to new new country is uh, really difficult for uh, for us, like for being like we couldn't able to communicate with people, and we struggled a lot. Uh, being we couldn't able to get together with families, and it's been a very tough tough time. You know, I should say. We were so lost how to help my son. Azad was diagnosed with depression. Well, my friend, unfortunately, he didn't survive a major collision. It was, it was a car accident, and he was one of my best friends, and I, I don't think I could recover or feel the same after. The hand washing um, was a significant sign that compulsive need to wash your hands and to recite the alphabet um, a certain number of times to play her piano pieces just a certain number of times, certain numbers were good numbers, some numbers were bad numbers. These were some of the signs that really raised the red flag for us. Used to be a very good soccer player, playing all the time with his friends. He just stopped. He just didn't want to go to the field. He stayed mostly in his room all the time. She really resisted going to school. She didn't want to go. I just thought it was normal for kids to not want to go to school. But then came the field trips. You know, every kid loves going on field trips, but every time nearing the field trip, she'd she she'd start getting upset at us. She, you know, she'd lash out at us for no reason. Sandeep, she had some new friends, and uh, we thought of uh, she is nice and uh, things are okay and she's better. But uh, she's um, becoming um, thin and um, she's acting picky about food and you know, and um, she's exercising every day, like for hours. We have no idea what is happening here, what is going on. You know, I was eating less and I was exercising more, so I realized um, that it wasn't healthy and it, it had become a problem. We as a family, we all sit together and eat. But when we notice Sandeep, she has all the time excuses not to sit with us. Now we realize that she did have a problem back then, and this eating disorder. Once I started sharing a little bit more about the problem, everybody you know, had their two cents. Everybody wanted to tell us what we were doing wrong. You know? we we're like, yeah, you know, kids that age, you need to be stricter with them. You gotta make them go to school. And they said, a lot of them said, you know what, it's just a phase, girls her age, you know. And as much as I like to believe that, but you know, as a parent, you know, there's, there's always something inside you, and you know that. You know, there has to be something deeper than that. There has to be something wrong. Um, at its worst, it felt like it was taking over our whole existence. Um, I, when things were at their worst, I actually seriously considered that I might have to leave my job and full-time just help the family keep going. Um, we um, struggled to get through every day. Mental health problems in teenagers and children can be really difficult to see because they're not like a broken arm or a fever where we can see them. And sometimes children and teenagers don't know how to talk about them. Sometimes they may have behaviors which the parents or teachers may see are normal, but they may actually be a sign of a serious emotional problem. 
Mental illness, in fact, can really affect everyone. And uh, some of the world's greatest minds, um, greatest geniuses, most famous artists, singers, sports people, leaders have had mental illness. There is no correlation between intelligence, achievement, hard work, um, who you are, what kind of family you come from, uh, and mental, mental illness. Really building a team around your child and getting as much help from all of, all of the team. And sometimes we think that we just need to get the psychiatrist, but it's amazing how helpful a coach or teacher can be, a next door neighbor, um, someone to talk to who may have experienced something similar. Peer support, learning from other families, learning from other parents, learning from other relatives who may have experienced. So really putting yourself out there and opening up and talking about it um, can help because you'd be surprised who might come in and, um, and be there for you. I didn't think it was going to go away, but then I, I saw the specialist, so then I, I actually thought I was going to get better. The school counselor suggested we contact the family doctor. It was wonderful to talk with someone who understood completely what we were going through and who we could sit down with and map it out what the trouble was. Now that I have the tools to face my OCD, I feel like I have a brighter future. I talk to my parents now and I, I feel great. A great resource is the Kelty Mental Health Resource Center at BC Children's Hospital. They're really helpful. They have people who speak different languages. They have publications, online resources. You can call them. You can go in person. Um, they will help you find what you need in your community. Families who are concerned about the mental health of their children can seek help. They can ask their family doctors. They can ask their pediatricians. They can ask their school counselors and I really encourage families to not give up. I say that if you suspect something is wrong, it's better to address the problem than to ignore and hoping that it will go away, definitely. Because just by sitting here and just waiting, the problem might eventually get worse. And you know, it is better to be safe than sorry. Go talk to your doctor, go talk to a school counselor, see if they're exhibiting signs of school as well. You know, in, in the end, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with if it's just out in the open, if you actually know what the source of the problem is. Tell other families to trust your instincts. And when you feel that something's not quite right, trust that feeling and explore it. And talk with your child. And seek outside help. It's there. Because children have a really good success rate with treatment.